Hello, my name is Aaron Rhodes from Falafel Software. You are watching the Rad Tree View XML data video. In this video, we'll cover how to bind a tree view to XML data and how to customize it based on some server side events. During this video, there may be code examples written in either Visual Basic or C Sharp. However, the concepts are the same and code is provided for you in both languages. Well, let's start a new website. We'll use the Ajax enabled website so that our Ajax controls work properly. And we'll use C sharp this time. Now in our design view, the only control I'm going to drop here is our rad tree view. I'm also going to add some files that I've created to this project. So before I do anything, let's open our Solution Explorer view. and our Windows Explorer. And in my websites directory, I have an images folder and two XML files. I'm going to copy these. And paste them into my project directory also then going to add them to the project. Now let's take a look at some of those files. The first one we'll take a look at is the spinoffs.xml. This is an XML file and it contains television shows and their spinoffs and crossovers. It's a pretty extensive XML file, but this is a great example of how you can construct the structure of your XML file to be loaded into a rad tree view. And my idea is I'm going to be populating a tree view with all of the television shows and their spin-offs for this example. The first example of this is going to be very simple. We'll simply double click on the form to create the page load event and we'll check for the post back because we only want this to happen once when the page first loads. and rad tree view one dot the f the method we want is load content file this takes an XML file and loads it that's all we really need we're going to be referring to the XML file relatively and that's all we need to get this to run let's take a look at that Here our debugging window, we'll just click OK. And there it is. There's all of our TV shows and their various spin-offs. OK, that worked. Let's close this browser and make this a little fancier. First let's open up the Solution Explorer and there is a second XML file that I've created here. Let's take a look at that. And of course these examples 
are available to you by clicking on the code button in your Telerik trainer. This XML file is only different in a couple of ways from the spinoffs.xml file. The first difference is I've made this list shorter. It only goes up to the end of the A's. The second difference is I've added a second property to each node. This is the value property. And it's important that it's called the value property because it corresponds to our rad tree view nodes value property. If I were to go in here, go to build rad tree view, and create a new node, that node has a value property. And this value can be filled with any value you want but it is called value and that's important for XML data binding because when this is bound now if we go to the code here I'm changing this to spinoffs 2xml which is the name of that file when it is bound that value property will map directly to the value property of each node So what do we do with this value property? Well, we're going to use it for loading in some images to each of these nodes. The first thing I think we'll do is go back to our default ASPX and make a few changes to really snaz this up. First, I want to change the skin to the Web 2.0 skin. The reason for that is some of the images that I've created really are handled better by the Web 2.0 skin because they're larger than your average icon. So now I've changed the skin and we need to write a little bit of code so I'm going to go to the properties view and the events and we're actually going to use an event called node created. In this instance of an XML file being loaded, the node data bound event is not fired. The node created event is what's used. There's our function. What we're going to be checking for is the value of that value property. We access it directly like that using the red tree node event args property that's being passed into this event. And I'm using root as the string to look for. because in our spinoffs2.xml our root menu items have a value of root while our child menu items have a value of a file name that we're going to be using because that file name is what we have in our images directory. Now back to the code. I'm changing the image URL of non-root nodes. Again, we can just use that value because child nodes I've set to equal that exact file name. In the case of the root node, I'm going to be doing something a little different, so that wouldn't really have been useful to me. I'm checking for the root value so that 
in this else, I can do a bunch of different things that I want to do to those root nodes. Those things I'm just going to paste in here. The first three, the image URL, I'm setting to that image, the TV off icon. The hovered image URL is a TV static icon, and the expanded image URL is a TV on icon. This is going to make it so the image has different states depending on what's going on. I'm also setting the nodes expanded to equal true because when the web page loads in the first time I want all of the tree to be expanded. That should do it for the aesthetics of what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Now you'll see that everything is expanded. The skin really makes it stand out with these large images and we can see all the different images have been added to these child nodes for all the spin-offs and some interesting behavior with the root node. When I hover over an item it turns to the static image and when I minimize it turns the TV off image. And that really makes it look like an interactive page that's interesting to use and look at. This concludes the Telerik Rad Tree View XML data video. In this video, we saw how to bind the Rad Tree View to XML data and how to manipulate the tree view using some server side code. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and remember, you and I, and a little bit of Telerik, are making web development easy.